Hey guys, it's Jan and I wanted to go a little bit further in depth on Blender GIS, which is something that I made a short one minute video about a few days, weeks ago. And uh, there seemed to be some confusion about whether I'd made the opening render of the... Matterhorn Mountain with Blender GIS. And yes, I definitely did. Uh, I just probably went a little bit too fast in the video, so I will show you now, step by step, how to make such a nice render. And uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you want to know more in depth uh, with a real video course, how to make environments in Blender, I couldn't recommend anything that's better than the course Martin Kleckner made over on CG Boost. He really spent months figuring out every single variable and button you can press in Blender just to make the most awesome nature renders. So I would definitely check that out. You can find the link in the description. Alrighty, so here we are in Blender and I have already put a screenshot of, from Google Maps of the Matterhorn exact location because otherwise I would never find it. And here we're going to the GIS menu to load the base map, which basically just loads the whole earth. And then you can zoom in to where you want. So obviously the Matterhorn is in the blurry place of Europe. In fact, it's in Switzerland. I can already see it. It's right there. It looks like we are targeting you Switzerland for destruction or something from space. There it is. Now you can lock by pressing L, you can lock the region that you've selected like this region. I don't want to zoom in anymore, but I do want to increase the resolution. So I press L to lock and then I scroll up on the mouse wheel and it will still increase the resolution. But uh, it takes a long time. I've sped it up here. It takes forever to download. It can take like 20 minutes or something. And uh, then you get this shiny plane and you can download the height map as well, which also takes a minute or five or 10. And you get this shiny blob of relief. I really recommend you embed the texture in the file and save it because otherwise if it crashes you lose the resolution of the terrain. You lose the height map, I mean. Here to get the most out of it, I subdivide it in edit mode. You really have to do that, otherwise you don't have enough detail. Reduce the specularity and increase the roughness of that map, otherwise it would look uh, strangely shiny. And I can uh, tell you from experience that Switzerland is not shiny like that. So here I'm adding a uh, HDRI with a Gaffer add-on, which is the probably the best add-on I've ever bought. And the Blender is already unhappy because it's uh, so many subdivisions, so I've turned on Simplify. And I'm adding a camera, but the camera doesn't see anything because it's all too big. So I have to add, I have to increase the uh, clipping end. Otherwise, it's not, it's a massive, massive mesh, basically. So I've locked the camera to view so I can move around and find a nice shot here. Uh, later, I will increase the, the height of these uh, mountains a bit in the uh, modifier the displacement modifier because it's a bit too boring now. So now I'm just trying to search which one is the Matterhorn again. And finding a nice angle with the camera. And changing the length of the lens a bit to make it a bit more dramatic. 30 millimeter, it's a good, good camera lens length for this kind of stuff. So I just added a uh, an empty, although you can't see it because the overlays were turned off. And the empty will be the target for the depth of field of the camera, which is always nice. But in this case, the mesh is just so gigantic that you can't really see the depth of field. So I was trying to uh, scale it down and see if I could get a bit more blurriness. Here you go. And experimenting a bit more with the HDRIs from uh, they are mostly from HDRI Haven, but you can just automatically download them all with the Gaffer add-on. It's really awesome. 
and this is my book. I was just uh, sometimes I read my own book, you know. I was just checking which picture that I used for the uh, background. It's this one from textures.com. I downloaded it as an image uh, on plane with the images as planes add on. Uh, set to emit, of course, and then uh, just uh, kind of line it up with the camera. If I were really smart, which unfortunately I'm not, I would have parented it to the camera. But I didn't, so later I have to move it again when I move the camera. Here I'm rotating this HDRI a bit. And setting up some kind of camera move. You can actually scale keyframes in the timeline, which can be very handy. But uh, Blender kept crashing when I tried to render it, so here is a quick tip. You can increase the scale of your camera. That way you can get kind of the camera fulcrum or the area which is inside of the camera view. And then just select everything else and just delete it. That way you massively reduce the amount of memory you have to use and then you can actually render it. So here you go. This is the rendered shot. I added a little bit of um, rotation to the camera movement. So yeah, good luck with the Blender JS. It's a lot of fun. You need some patience, but it's worth it.